What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. Today I've got another collaboration with Seth's Bike Hacks. We built this awesome kind of truck bed camper cabinet. It's got a working sink with this awesome growler from UKEG from Growler Works out in Portland, Oregon. The door here opens up to reveal all kinds of storage inside. You've got mason jars with all your toiletries, LED lights, storage for all your clothes to keep them all dry and clean. And one added feature is when it's closed, you've got a little phone stand. You can throw a speaker up here. It's really awesome. This whole thing's powered by a 50,000 milliamp hour battery pack. So these LED lights will run for a long time. You can also charge your laptop, charge your phone. We've got USB ports here on the front. It's just an awesome piece of equipment. Seth and I knocked this out in about a day. I will have free plans available for this. So check a link in the video description below if you want to build them yourself. And let's go ahead and get started with the build. Before heading out to the shop, Seth and I had a quick brainstorming session in front of SketchUp and ironed out all the details for the build. And here's a little idea of how that session went. What if we had a flip out? Ooh, like a laptop tray? Like a work, yeah, like a workstation. So ah. something like this, it would then hinge up like that. And a 45 on that piece, you know what I mean? Then they would fit together. When you go to rotate it, you come down 90, so that'll be Perfect for a little LED strip. Oh my God, that would be so I mean, sick. Yeah, what did we say, three inches? That's pretty that freaking slick. Outstanding. With the cabinet modeled, we moved out to the shop and started breaking down material. The cabinet carcass is made from half inch plywood, mostly just to keep the weight down since Seth will be taking this in and out of his truck. I started by cutting a 30 inch square on the table saw and then cut the piece in half diagonally with the track saw. Next, I marked the exact location of 29 inches on each end and then cut both halves at the same time to make sure they were the exact same size. With the top and bottom pieces cut to size, I moved on to cutting the side panels. Each side has a 45 degree bevel on its front edge and this lines up with the angled front edge of the top and bottom pieces. I first cut the pieces to rough length, cutting the bevel on one end once both pieces were to their final length, I ripped both of them to their final width of 14 inches. Next, it was time for assembly of the cabinet carcass. I decided to use pocket holes here and somehow missed getting footage of drilling the pocket holes, but you probably know what that looks like. I started the assembly process by attaching the two back panels to each other with glue and one inch pocket screws. We then attached the bottom. You might notice an extra set of hands in these shots, and those hands belong to Kressel from Maker Size, another awesome YouTube channel specializing in metal casting. Definitely go check him out and get subscribed to his channel if you don't already. Before attaching the top to the cabinet, I needed to cut in the hole for the sink as well as a recess for the growler which we'll be using as a faucet. For this task, I decided to use my new Inventables X-Carve, mainly just to get some practice using Easel, their free CAD cam program. If you don't have a CNC, you could certainly just do this with a router or jigsaw. For the sink, the hole will go all the way through the top, but the growler will be recessed into the top about a quarter of an inch. And this recess will just keep the growler from sliding around when it's in use. If you don't have access to something like a CNC, you could easily just add some little blocks to keep the growler from sliding around. To cut out these sections, I used a quarter inch upcut spiral bit, and I'll have this design file up on Easel if you'd like to make one of these for yourselves. Easel is a free to use web-based software, and I'll have an affiliate link in the video description below if you'd like to sign up and play around with it. Once the X-Carve was done, we got the top attached to the rest of the cabinet carcass, again using pocket screws and glue. The final piece to add to the carcass was a piece of hard maple trim that I cut to size using my jointer, planer, and table saw. You could just as easily buy a piece of hardwood at your local home center, I just had some hard maple on hand. The trim is half an inch thick by three quarters of an inch wide, since the front door for the cabinet will be made from three quarter inch plywood, rather than the half inch plywood that the rest of the cabinet's made from. We attached the trim with glue and brad nails, filling the nail holes afterwards. With the carcass assembled, we test fit it in Seth's truck to make sure it fit properly, and it was a perfect fit. Next, we moved on to making the front door of the cabinet. The front door and bottom support strip are made from three quarter inch plywood, mostly just for rigidity. And there's a 45 degree bevel cut on the edges of both pieces so that they nest together when the door is opened. This not only looks good, but it gives the shelf a lot more support. After cutting the pieces to width of the table saw, I cut them to final length at the miter saw. Before attaching the piano hinge to the inside of the door, 
I added a round over to the edges of the door using a 3 8 inch radius round over bit at the router table. And I always try to add an edge treatment like this to plywood if I'm going to leave the edges exposed, as I found it just helps to keep the veneer from peeling back along the edges over time. Once I added the roundover, I sanded the door and bottom support strip up to 180 grit. While I'm sanding, let's talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Oil Can Hancock's Man Spray. Oil Can Hancock's Man Sprays are body sprays, but better, and are built in America. Oil Can Hancock's comes in three scents, Cool Power, Extra Fresh, and Supreme Edge, with my favorite being Supreme Edge. Whether you need to freshen up after a night of camping in your pickup, get your gym bag smelling great, or just want to smell your best before a night out, Oil Can Hancock's is there for you. Get 30% off your first purchase using coupon code JOHNNY30 after clicking the link in the video description below. After sanding, I installed a 30 inch piano hinge on the inside of the door, but forgot to account for the length of the screws. Oh, because no. you have a clamp on it? No, because the screws went into the miter. We could probably clean it up. So how, how far in there do you think they went? <laughs> probably decently far. To shorten the length of the screws a little, we headed over to the belt grinder and Kressel ground down the screws to the correct length. After a little bit of wood filler in the holes, they were barely noticeable, so not really a big deal here. Before putting the hinge back on the pieces, we drilled a hole in the bottom strip for the USB charging port, and this charging port will be on the front of the cabinet and will be connected to a 40,000 milliamp hour battery pack, which can charge an iPhone about 18 times. I'll have a link to the exact battery pack and USB port we used in the video description below in case you're interested. With the hole for the USB port drilled, we reattached the hinge and drilled a few holes to attach the bottom strip to the cabinet carcass. Off camera, we also added a few blocks to the inside of the cabinet just to give the screws a little more wood to bite into. For some added storage, we added a few mason jars to the inside of the cabinet by screwing a few self-tapping screws up through the mason jar lids into the underside of the top. This allows the jars to be screwed on and off and stored up and out of the way. And this is really a perfect spot for toiletries or other small items. To hold the door in place, I installed a few barrel bolts, one on each side of the door. And make sure to pre-drill the holes here, otherwise this trim will split out really easily on you. Next, I made a pair of handles slash phone holders from a couple scraps of hard maple. And these are roughly six inches wide by three and a quarter inch deep, and they serve two purposes. First, obviously they're used as handles to open and close the door, but second, they also support the door when it's in the open position. With these handles designed like this, we could avoid having chains or some other kind of door hardware to support the door. And they also cost nothing to make since they were made from scrap, which is obviously an added bonus. We attach the handles using three inch and a quarter pocket screws per handle. The last piece to add to the cabinet was the center divider and support, and these were made from half inch plywood again, and the support was especially important just to remove any flex from the top of the cabinet. Once again, I attached the two pieces to each other using pocket screws, and then attached the pieces to the cabinet the same way. With the center divider in, the cabinet was basically done, but we decided to trick it out a little more by laser etching Cess logo along with my logo on the off cut from the sinkhole. I just got this new laser cutter, the Full Spectrum Muse, and I'm having a ton of fun with it. This offcut fits perfectly in the sink bowl and serves as a cover for the sink when not in use. With that, the cabinet was done. Off camera, we ran the LED light strips under the front trim, installed the USB port, and got everything set up in Seth's truck. With the soft top installed, the back of the pickup is super cozy with plenty of space for an average size adult. The door serves as the perfect place to work on your laptop or eat a meal, and the UK growler as the sink actually works like a charm. And with everything set up in the truck, the camper cabinet was done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I had a ton of fun. Every time me and Seth get together in the shop, it's always a, a total blast. We always build something weird, but honestly, this is super useful. I don't think either of us have ever seen something like this. Totally his idea, but I helped to kind of bring it into reality and I think it turned out awesome. This maple plywood from Pure Bond is gorgeous. Uh, the sink works awesome. Obviously you can fill this with beer if you wanted to brush your teeth outside and you'd have a gallon of beer on draft in your little camper. And it's honestly really cozy in here. This little pop top is awesome. Keeps you kind of out of the elements and I would love to spend a night in this. This is a little better than camping on the ground for sure. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you haven't already, go check out Seth's channel. He does awesome videos on mountain biking every week. And uh, yeah, definitely go subscribe to him. Uh, if you want to learn about any of the tools or materials I used, I'll have a link to those in the video description below. And last, I want to say a huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much for the support. All right, guys, until next time, thanks for watching and happy building.